Comrades, fellow South Africans, I greet you all in the name of peace, democracy, and freedom for all. If we stand together, we can sweep everything before us. You may arrest and imprison me, but you cannot stop the might of the African people. That you want. Well, I hate white supremacy. It's quite impossible, my friend. Not and so I think I shall fight to the end of the struggle. There will be freedom in our time. Of that, I've not the slightest doubt. We are not bitter, but we are compelled to resist to the death. We know how to laugh here, we know how to die here. Come on down to Sophia Town. Saku Puga such a beggar. 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 I am your mama, your mama. Every man and woman shall have the right to vote. And with hearts and minds. You've been gone three nights, Nelson. I told you I would be working late tonight. Your children, remember them? The so-called Congress of the People is over. I have a warrant for your arrest. To set him free. My we call upon all people of South Africa, both black and white together. To send us your hopes and dreams for the future of our nation. And my name is Uspatla Kwega. Welcome to yet again another episode of Art Foods and Democracy Dialogues in partnership with the South African State Theatre. Let's see again, it's a process tool part. Enjoy. Member of the Logistics Committee. My third thought was that 
But the show will go on. Nelson Holly Sasa Mandela, why in Dotana can no pino sake any? Can you know Hendrum Casa Mandela? In course, no Malula Wob course, Baba Tim, Bugany, no longer leases a Sakwama Diba. Mandela's original name was Holly Sasa, which literally means pulling the branch off a tree, or colloquially, troublemaker. He was given the name Nelson by his white missionary school teacher at the age of seven. He has also been known as Dalibunga, his circumcision name as well as Madiba, his clan name. His father, Mkaja, was one of the grandsons of Ngubenguka, a king of the Abatembu and leader of the Madiba clan. Mkaja Mandela was involved in a minor dispute with the local white magistrate regarding cattle and refused a summons to appear before the magistrate as he did not believe that the matter fell under the colonial government's purview. As a result, he was charged with insubordination and the colonial powers stripped him of his chieftainship, land and cattle on the 1st of October of 1926, without any consultation with the paramount chief, Sambu Jongilizwe. The river remembers. The river slowly swallows the softness of time and carries it home to the big, big ocean. The woman is the river, running in and out of oceans of love into lands of acceptance and rejection. The woman is human first and woman after. The man pulls the woman into a puddle for his amusement, at times an oasis to quench his never-ending thirst for power. The woman tirelessly needs the dough of life, her existence baked under harsh suns and ungrateful men. She multiplies her forgiveness to break the cloud to survive on the bread of life another day. The woman is human Well, we, we are proudly South African. As you can see, I'm always with a crochet hook and wool, uh, transforming wool into blankets, as are many thousands of people around our country. So it all started, you know, shortly after the passing of our beloved Madiba. It was my husband's birthday on the 19th of December. Madiba passed away on the 5th of December, 2013. And Zelda, Lahransi, his trusted assistant for many, many years, was at the lunch table. It was a small gathering of people, and we were talking about Mandela Day, you know, how we're going to continue Madiba's legacy, how we're going to live his legacy. And I was boasting about my domestic abilities, of which I have absolutely none. <laughs> and Zelda said, why don't you make 67 blankets for Mandela Day? And I said, sure, no problem, but it was sort of lighthearted banter. My sister arrived on Christmas Day and my gift was a bag of wool like this and a crochet hook reminding me of my pledge. And so on Christmas Day 2013, I started crocheting and I realized very, very quickly I wouldn't be able to do 67 blankets on my own. I don't have 67 friends. So at three o'clock in the morning on Facebook, is there anybody out there that might be able to help me make a blanket because I've pledged 67 and I need 67 blankets by Mandela Day. When I woke up, I saw literally hundreds of responses. I'll help you, hashtag I'm in, hashtag 67 blankets, hashtag yes we will. That's when I learned about hashtags, the power of social media combined with the power of Nelson Mandela. We all wanted to do something to continue his legacy. And often, I don't know about you, but on Mandela Day every year, you know, you sort of scratch your head, what am I going to do? Painting a classroom, but I've never painted before. And this is such an easy way, stitch by stitch, keeping Madiba's legacy alive. Every blanket that we make gets a label that reads 67 blankets for Nelson Mandela Day. So the person receiving the blanket knows his or her entire life that Mandela 
is looking after me. You know, as you know, in South Africa, a blanket has such significance. It's, it's, it, it's more than warmth. In many cultures across our land, um, blankets are made, special blankets are given the birth of a baby, a marriage, putting someone to rest, a birthday, Christmas. So those blankets mean so much. Many people have had a grandmother make a blanket for them and that blanket remains with the person for the rest of his or her life. So, I mean, my husband has a blanket that his mother made and she's no longer with us, but part of her remains in his life, in my life, through the work that she did stitch by stitch. So I think it also reminds us, you know, of our differences, that we, we're not that different. We, the, our similarities are stronger than our differences. And these blankets woven um, signify the tapestry of our lives, the tapestry of our country. So we're very, very proud that we are making these blankets with our own two hands. The recipient, the person who receives the blanket, we are sending a message to every single person that receives a blanket, thousands of people, that this blanket was made, it took time, it was made with love, with our own two hands. I'm sure there's been so many highlights um, that you have seen that you that you can like to share with us, that you would like to share with us. Um, I would like to know what are those highlights that you've had um, since you have started the project nine years ago? Well, I have to tell you that I got a call from Mpundi Wundler, the producer of Generations, years ago when we first started, asking if I'd be interested in 67 blankets for Nelson Mandela Day being woven into the script of Generations. So pretty much overnight, they had an audience of like 10 million across Africa. Overnight, we became a household name, thanks to Mfundi Wundler. <laughs> but so that's a highlight. And over the years, there've been many, many highlights, you know, Guinness World Records, et cetera, et cetera. But for me, the biggest, biggest, biggest highlight has to be watching people come together from all walks of life, all religions, all races, socioeconomic backgrounds, women, men, children coming together through bright, warm, colorful thread. The sense of Ubuntu that we see each and every single day with 67 blankets for Nelson Mandela Day is so inspiring. And it's like, it's just amazing for me to see how this simple idea has just grown, snowballed, and people, I think it's given so many people a sense of purpose, a reason to get out of bed. A lot of lonely people out there who have found a family, a family of thousands of nitwits from Adiba. We call ourselves nitwits from Adiba, lovingly referred to ourselves as nitwits from Adiba. Um, a sense of comfort people going out of their comfort zones finding new people in their lives the most unlikely friendships that have been formed and the most awe-inspiring stories that you hear you know the biggest the biggest spin-off for me is the sense of ubuntu Della said that no one truly knows a nation until one has gone inside its jails a nation should not be judged by how it treats its highest citizens, but how it treats its lowest. The prisoners in prisons around the country have helped us set four Guinness World Records. They have contributed literally thousands, thousands of blankets. I want to mention um, a man who has been living behind bars for, I don't know, 15 years or so, who has really, really um, made 67 blankets. And a very important part of so many lives of inmates. He has spearheaded many of our big projects. You know, in 2018, 
we created the massive Mandela masterpiece. It was designed by my assistant Yaku and we had our ambassadors around the country galvanizing people to make blankets in black, in gray and the colors of our South African flag. And behind bars, they contributed thousands of blankets. This blanket, this particular blanket, which measured the size of two rugby fields, in the right order, it was like a jigsaw puzzle. From the sky, it was so big, you could only see the face of Mandela from the sky, from the helicopter, via satellite. We got two satellite images of that incredible blanket laid out at Zondervata Maximum Correctional Center in Cullinan. So it's, it's, you know, I'd say it's the knitting revolution for Madiba. It's so inspiring. What else has happened in prisons because of 67 blankets? The creative energy that, that I found with inmates having turned to writing poetry, dance, speaking so, particularly intelligently, beautifully, creatively about 67 blankets is you want to cry. When one inmate spoke about, we are knitting together broken lives. We are knitting together broken trusts. With 67 blankets, we are finding our humanity again. Then I know that we are doing something right in the rehabilitation of offenders and when the day comes for that inmate to walk out of the gates after having spent time creating for people on the outside i know that that person any person who puts their their fingers to wool and a hook and creates warmth there's goodness that person will be walking out of the gates a better person, equipped with a new skill that can, if necessary, take them somewhere. In design, in clothes, cloth making clothes, you know. So it's not, it's not, it's not lost. It's with you forever. I learned this craft at JP High School for Girls. And I didn't crochet for many years. When did I matriculate? About 10 years ago. Huh? <laughs> but, but it was a long time ago. But I remembered. I remembered. I didn't have to go to a YouTube video to teach me how to crochet. It came back after, let's say, 40 years. I was very fortunate to have spent a lot of time with Nelson Mandela. My husband and he had a very special father-son relationship. In fact, my husband used to behave around one person and one person only, Nelson Mandela. <laughs> um, Madiba was there when we when we got married. He counseled us. He was my my husband listened to Nelson Mandela. Mandela said, "It is in your hands now." Do you remember that? It is in your hands now. And with sixty-seven blankets, we are listening to him with every stitch that we make with our own two hands and honoring M Mandela's legacy as individuals. So, and I think that's by making a meaningful difference in our community, not just on Mandela Day, but every single day. 67 blankets for Nelson Mandela Day does not only distribute blankets on July 18th, Mandela Day, we make every day a Mandela day. You know, July 18th, it's already cold. Blankets should, all our blankets should have been distributed by Mandela day. So um, I do think that Mandela is watching over us. I think he's smiling down. And when we come together, we create magic. We create Mandela magic. And I'm so proud to be a part of this incredible 67 Blankets family.
Mbunani Ikamalami Unobuladi, Nutilwetu Danazele. Um, I hold a doctorate from the University of Warwick in Business Strategy and a master's from the Universities of Witwatersrand in Dramatic Arts. Namtlanje Mfunugunjela, a little bit about who I am, my relationship with Unelson Mandela and the legacy that he has left behind. But before I do, I thought I would share this with you so that you can get a sense of what it is that I do when I play in the different spaces that I engage in. So firstly, what you'll see is Unogulali is Umu do that is in the creative arts. I studied dramatic arts and um, I've been in productions like Ijo Vijo, which was on Netflix and SABC One. My debut program or my debut show was When We Were Black, um, which played on SABC One and I played the role of Mangi. Acting is something that I'm passionate about and I continue to do. However, now I act as well as produce my own shows. I recently finished um, producing a show called My Children, My Africa, which is a play written by Afro Fugard that was on at the Soweto Theatre. I've also produced an African adaptation of Animal Farm, um, shows like Nothing But The Truth by um, Dr. John Gani, and even explored new productions like one called um, Humans at Work that was looking at um, how the 1960s closing down of factories in Coventry in the United Kingdom affected the people in that society. So that is one hat I wear. Another hat in his, that I wear or is, in his in his trailer, is that I am an academic. I hold a PhD in business strategy, which means that I have the opportunity and privilege to lecture. I currently lecture as full-time faculty at the Gordon Institute of Business Science, which is um, the business school that belongs to the University of Pretoria. Um, where I lecture in strategy, leadership, as well as looking at how one can thrive in the consulting space. Speaking of which, I am also an entrepreneur. I run my own business um, called Nogulali Productions, and Nogulali Productions does the plays that I produce. She experienced works in the consulting space. And my third little baby is a company called Nagathon, which is based in the United Kingdom. And that looks at how we can use behavioral science, design thinking, as well as dramatic arts to change the world, especially in instances that relate to health as well as human um, behavior so that being said i wear these three different hats i am one who was born on the african continent but i consider myself transnational and what i mean by that is i am an individual that is born bred and buttered in south africa but i'm currently living in the united kingdom um, and have been here for seven years um, and i was here to further my studies during the phd but as nazi noni the corona changed and my plans it to song here so i decided to stay here and i've actually really enjoyed it i am on what is known as a global talent visa which is a visa given to people with exceptional talent in various areas and my exceptional talent is within the arts so but before i do that i'd like to use a quote by steve jobs that says you can't connect the dots looking forward you can only connect them by looking backwards so where she is now known as Dr. Nogulali Danazele. This is me in my PhD graduation gown celebrating my achievements. I was actually able to attain that because when I was doing my master's, it was paid for by the Mandela Rhodes Foundation which is an important organization that was established as part of Nelson Mandela's legacy because he believed Ubuti education is one of the most powerful weapons that one can use in their liberation and I concur. So I was fortunate enough to be one of um, 23 um, people chosen across the country in 2009 going into 2010, well 2008 for 2009 to be doing my master's at WITS in dramatic arts using the Mandela Rhodes um, scholarship. One other thing is I've also done commercials like the one um, that you may have seen and lastly one of my favorite quotes is one by Shakespeare that essentially says that all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players they have the exits and the entrances and the one man in his time plays many parts and his acts being seven ages so similarly i actually have played quite a lot of different parts but the one that i would like to focus on Namshanje, is the part that i am playing as an academic that is appreciative of Ile Gassiaga or Nelson Mandela, but not just him, but also those that actually enabled him to help South Africa gain its liberation. So that's a little bit about myself. 
I've been asked also to speak about how the scholarship has actually changed my life. Um, and from the age of 16, I actually lived primarily um, off scholarships. Um, my school fees were highly subsidized when I was in high school. At WITS, I was on NSFAS and then also got um, a scholarship for my honors and a scholarship for my master's as well as a scholarship for my PhD. And I think the Mandela Road Scholarship changed my life because it was the first time that I was actually being acknowledged um, as a leader that is exceptional in what it is that they have done. I was one of the first black deputy head girls in my primary school and in my high school, which already told me that I've got leadership qualities, but I didn't know that my leadership qualities actually extended tended towards um, leadership on a national scale, especially because the scholarship has got four pillars, which are education, entrepreneurship, leadership, as well as reconciliation. These have actually become the four pillars in Zimpiloyami as well, primarily because that I believe Ruti without education is very difficult to progress in life and not just formal education, informal education as well. Then entrepreneurship is the way that we can achieve economic success. Um, leadership is the way in which you carry yourself the beliefs and the core values that you uphold. And lastly, reconcil reconciliation. You can't move forward in life if you don't reconcile with your past. You can't build new relationships if you don't reconcile with your past. But also we as a country cannot reconcile our ourselves with what our destiny is if we don't acknowledge it in the mistakes of our forefathers and foremothers so what i think is the legacy that i have been able to um gain from the mandela brand um and his legacy as well is one that says you know what in any situation I've got my own form of incarceration. In Biloya Kenya, Tata is a metaphor that is representative of the challenges that we all are given. Nobody has a perfect life. And similar to Nelson Mandela being incarcerated, I know that I've been incarcerated in certain areas of my life as a black person as a woman but also as a young person there are areas that i have been prohibited to enter because of this intersectionality however i have thought to myself how can i be the change that i want to see in the world and how can i bring my own liberation by actually taking um matters into my own hand and creating my own opportunities being up on the producer for example as opposed to just acting i have seen that similar to how um you know our freedom fighters actually had to take matters into their own hands from the deity machinis to the steve because writing about information that was not readily accessible to us back then i too actually take my liberation economically as well as in the, in the education space the work that I do in teaching because there I believe that I am passing on the baton that was given to me in the form of education but also I am creating jobs through my entrepreneurial endeavors um, I'm solving the world's problems through my consulting um, and also ensuring Uguti through my acting so I believe Uguti Legacy Mandela is one that continues to live through me, um, not fully in the way that I'm not saying that he's perfect. Kona isn't donami in Navamela Nimazo as in Zile as a leader, but similarly, Kona isn't donami in Naz Tandi Sisi in his Zenzaya as a leader. So I take him as an individual that actually walked the earth. I do not glorify the way in which he leads just as much as I do not think which young companions are in is perfect. But more than anything, I think Obalu Legile is the fact that I am very, very honored and privileged to be an individual that is not living um, in a time where um, I am not allowed to move freely across countries and across the world. Um, my opinions matter to those that I engage with, but also I have a voice that has been granted to me through the education that I've been exposed to, but also through my own hard work and determination and the sacrifices that were made by my mother. Nyazuguti, as you watch this, you might be stopping and thinking, okay, so what would Lali maybe want us to take away from what it is that she is saying? I would like to say, Uguti, if because anything that you want to achieve is obtainable. Sacrifice. Opila in the UK has got its benefits, 
because I'm winning the new one very, very, really, which is sometimes um, what I call economic exile because I'm not with my family because I'm in exile, um, but it's got an economic value that I hope so I make sure and in the short space of time that I have been availed with the opportunities that I have. My handle on Instagram is at nobu underscore lali. That's N-O-B-U underscore lali. If you have found this conversation to be entertaining, inspiring, interesting, or um, something that has intrigued your curiosity, please get in touch with me on Instagram. To um, the funders of this program, thank you ever so much for giving us artists a voice, giving us a platform, but giving us an opportunity to engage with people from across South Africa. Nintanda noinge emakaya imina indogazi yagwa tangazele unogulali uti uti tangazele o doctor tangazele as some call me nyabong. My my response about this Mandela standing out is aligning him with uh, Oliver Tambo. Uh, they were lawyers uh, in the 50s. They had everything going for them. But uh, they had to sacrifice their own career careers. Which, if you look at those that were with them, who did not join liberation, they prospered somehow and went on to benefit under the apartheid um, um, regime as better blacks. So the major lesson for me from Madiba and for all of us is at times when you want to bring better men in the lives of others, you have to lose yourself. It's not always about you, it's about the life you, you, you are part of. Sacrifice is inherent in that. We read from his uh, Rivonia trial um, speech that many of his colleagues were somehow perturbed by his bravery, daring to tell the judge, my lord, um, it's a cause that I'm prepared to die for. How on earth can he invite um, to be sent to the gallows? That's the type of a brave man that he was. That even sometimes his bravery was premised on not knowing everything. I say if he was of my age, naivety. We learn about this from his autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom, that he says, as he was being flown from, 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 the, from the magistrate's uh, court of, of sales to Robben Island, he was being flown on a helicopter or, or, or aircraft to Robben Island. He says, oh, I only realized we could really have fought our liberation within South Africa. I now see places where we could have built cells and fought effectively. Um, he realized that probably too late um, um, with, with his tactics and those of his colleagues because the apartheid regime had clamped down on them. We know that he was instrumental, in fact, the first commander in chief of Mkondo. So, so you talk about the brave person who is prepared to lead from the front for the cause that his life would be nothing without a thing. It took him and his colleagues 27 years and his comrades 27 years to make sense, to make sense that we are not out ill anyone. We are out for an embrace of all under the cloak of unity. 
because we need each other. There are many other things that you learn from 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 Madiba or about Madiba that no matter how much sacrifices you make for the people, it doesn't stop people from vilifying you. Your legacy is not always dependent on the goodwill that you wear or the sacrifices that you made. It depends on the implication of of the people. Um, interpretation sometimes that are premised on what if you look back into our history, you will realize that South Africa has a population of 70, of 60 million people. And yet South Africa has 11 kingdoms. And there are many others that are still fighting to become kingdoms. So we might end up with more than 11 kingdoms um, as a population of, 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 of 60 million people. Nelson Mandela comes from the Eastern Cape, which has 6.5 million people. Out of those 11 kingdoms, Eastern Cape alone has six kingdoms. So not appreciate what he has done it has nothing to do either with his faults or, or, or what he could have done. It has to do with what is inherent as particularly black passion for this unity. It is something that is inherent in us as black people, not seeing good in the other if I don't see myself as part of those with the hands and the trouble. So um, these are the lessons as, as young people we learn um, 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 from him. We know um, that people of Ghana owe their, um, their freedoms and, and aura from Gwame Nguruma. But when the the statue of Ngome Nkrumah was built because people of Ghana chopped his head. They didn't see value in it. And, 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 and so this is to be expected that a leader like Mandela and his comrades cannot be confident that no one is going to throw mud and stones at their legacy. Remember, every revolution is an incomplete any. So those who initiated it do not finish. And those who come after them have got to take the pattern and move forward rather than being vile and, and, and really vilifying um, those. So we learned that from, from Mandela because um, Mandela himself took over the baiting from people like David Stirman, from people like uh, Fadane, uh, people like Faku, people like uh, Makoma. Uh, people like Tzakan. Um So it's a continuing um, 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 battle. So from them, we take over as the current generation and not much to vilify them, um, but to say, how can I improve on, 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 on what they have started? Um, because um, I'm better poised, I've got a better vintage um, position because I could, I have observed and learned from their mistakes. So those are some of the issues that I learned from Madiba and his comrades, resilience, persistence, and over and above, amidst all the gloom, humor. Um, I preceded their humor. <laughs> but thank you for that answer. Uh, the next question is, why is democracy important for the arts? Democracy's importance to the arts is the specter of the alternative. Um, if, um, if you could say democracy is the better devil, because the, the, the opposite of democracy is, is I, I don't know why we are naive not to think about the alternative of democracy and, and know what, what it means. It means all the things that we have, we may not have them. I would have had, you would have had to send, the questions are going to send me to the committee of the dictator to approve. I would have had to send the, the answers I'm going to, predict, to give to you to the dictator. The alternative is telling people what to wear and what not to wear. The alternative is putting our noses into the private lives of the people. That's an alternative. 
The alternative is a mess. Therefore, as artists at, at all times, we must know the alternative to democracy is what is the opposite of what we have and what we enjoy now. And I think sometimes we we get so so absorbed in in anger and hatred to an extent that we don't give due diligence in thinking as an alternative what um, might might anger deliver me to. But that does not mean we relent on our effort to 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 look or not to look to gain more freedom. Um, I'm saying more freedoms um, despite us having freedom because sometimes I'm sitting here as as as, as a beneficiary of, of, of liberation. I'm, I'm managing an institution uh, built in 1892 um, 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 dependent on the largesse of the taxpayers. How do I then feel the freedom of expressing my own views within that largesse. Can I criticize the public or not? Can I criticize the politicians who are executive authority um, of the institution or not? Can I criticize the council that is the accounting authority or not? How do I relate with my staff members with all the, 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 the narrative known to, to, to our industry, sex for favors, um, 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 pearls, uh, getting preference um, and nepotism and all those issues. If we begin to be muted, um, all these issues are like what a friend of mine once said uh, when we were still teachers. He said, the time we take as a school administration to fix a window pane is an indication whether the school will become better or the school is on the road to 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 adult realm. <clears throat> Taking this example to, to 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 the question of democracy, the time it takes for us to lament a small issue that has a potential to grow and pull and bring down. The 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 the, 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 the um, critique of arts is an indication of how we will be um, in, 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 in 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 the industry. And next year, ne I'm sorry, next week on the 26th to the 28th of of of, of August 2022, the artists, dance and theatre practitioners and fraternity will be meeting in Johannesburg at a national theater and dance police. Oh my goodness. The first of its kind since 1995. Not the first initiative, but the first assembly where the artist now with the Department of Arts and Culture, AKA government, will be sitting to provide within the legal framework how arts, uh, rather, how dance and theater should find expression legally. This is a very huge thing. This is a very cumbersome um, um, attainment that came about through efforts of a number of, of people that we, 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 we can enumerate. Um, and foundation, Carta, RT, um, the, 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 the National Dance and, and Theatre Task Team, which over a period of time, um, um, starting from Panza um, and then and other initiatives that might not be clear in my eye, are now beginning to yield provision. The, the, the critical issue about this and, and, and linking it to democracy is that since the advent of the current dispensation, government was ruling, if I may put it that way, arts and, and, and theater and dance in particular, through the Cultural Institutions Act and the Public Finance Management Act. 
and anything in between which is bland. Now, if you read these two pieces of legislation that really um, 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 are hovering large above what we do for Atan, Dancing Theater, not a single bite, if, if, if a word is a bite, is that it mentions the word Dancing Theater. Not a single in those two legislation. So all in all, we are governed on the basis of wins as the institution. We are dragged to what financiers and economists think, what lawyers and, and these other people who draft legislation think. And we have not been given chance as the, as the sector to say, no, 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 this is how we want to become. Because what happens is, 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 is that when, when you, you let that happen, where you bring economists, uh, supply chain management, HR, uh, accountants, um, strategists, to be the only people with, who speak on arts, what they do, they justify their qualifications around the table. Rather than focusing on arts and, and performing arts in particular, as to say, whoa, 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 whoa. what does that actor want? What does that dancer want? We all are afraid of the AG. We spend time, we spend money on what I could say is a general fear of what the AG does, what the AG does, and not thinking what does Sipesile, what does Andile, what does Sibongile is going to eat that evening. That person, whom he or she, is dedicating his life to arts. So that is what um, um, democracy is saying to me and the teachings of, of Mandela. Um, um, more than 27 years or, or close thereby, we are going to have a policy conference that will influence the government policies on, on how as the dance and theatre practitioners know ourselves and want ourselves within the realm of 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 plebiscites or legislation um um, 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 um want to be to be to be covered. So that's what democracy to me and, and theater says. And I think it should not be the end. Um because frankly I'm a I'm 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 a I'm a accounting officer um called CEO for the for the performing arts institution. You have the Deben Playhouse you have the market theater, you have the state theater, you have Artscape, you have Parkhoffs. We are six. And amongst ourselves, we're getting more than 300 million. And as these six institutions, <laughs> at nowhere we sit around the table to think how do we ensure that a production of Pilile will be touring in our theaters. We are not planning together. How are we expected to deliver same goals? So what it means is, is that if people were silent, we wouldn't be confident today that we're close by. And trepidations not take over our logic. Fear that we are going to lose our hegemony as, as individual institutions, or this is going to temper the power that we have. It can't. There always has got to be someone who accounts there's always has got to be someone who works towards feeding the one who accounts. Therefore, there always will be the institution. And the institutions just need to make sure they respond to the reality of the trust within which they find themselves. The gig economy. Dancers and actors are dependent on the situation, as it says, and to thrive and become better. For them to be able to be good parents to their children, for them to be good lovers to their better hearts, for them to be a pride. Thank you so much for that answer. Uh, now we are coming to our last question. And the last question is, how has Mandela's legacy influenced your craft? <clears throat> Uh, Mandela's legacy has influenced my craft 
by ensuring that I am not afraid to speak. However, also, I understand that King Out should not be like a car that goes off rail and hits a tree because the tree and the car, when one hits or collide, they don't collide, obviously. When the car hits the tree, they go, both get damaged. The, the campaign I have embarked on with my friends since 2008 until the Minister Natim Tetu declared the cultural institution. And how we fight is cognizant that the people we fight against, after all said and done, we will sit with them in the boardroom. Isn't that Mandela's... Um, attitude towards white people of or his oppressors. Um, you know, we are going to need these people. So at all times, you embark on a battle. Be mindful, you are going to need some of the people you are fighting. And uh, when you are ignorant of that fact, it makes a fool of you. Because when your battle is won, the people you're fighting against or with are still in power, but they allow you in. It's easy for them to corrupt you. It's easy for them to show you and put you on top of pedestals and make you forget about the very people that you're fighting or fighting for or the cause that you're fighting. That's one of, of the key lessons that we, 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 we learn um, from Mandela. And I, I think as, a, as an artist, and I think it was no accident for him to have a house in Houghton and to have a house in Pool. So that from time to time, he subjects himself to the world that have a complete disregard of his aura, but that takes him as the normal person they grew up with. And we need that at all times as writers. No matter we can be flown to, to an, an theater, to, to festivals around the world, to Edinburgh, to this, to that, to that, to New York, Broadway, West End, East End, wherever they are. We, at all times, have to be sure that we are preceded by our people from where we come from. Because Chris Mann, um, 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 as a professor at Rhodes, I, once in one of the sessions we, we had, he spoke of a writer as a, as a twofold person. He says, a, a writer must read. You can't be writing without reading. But it's the second point that for me uh, was critical. He said, a writer must live. So that you don't speak of characters that you have never lived with, that you, you really are imagining beyond uh, mysticism. And the third one would be the writer must write, which um, I always say to artists, um, that means don't write when you've got nothing else to do. Um, make sure that writing is part of your daily life. Rather stop doing other things because you've got to write. That's what Chris Mann um, used to say. So this is taken from, from um, um, aligning with part of Madiba. Is is that as a as a as a as a as a theater as a writer? Sometimes you've got to lose yourself. Now I'm sitting an, on a pedestal where I've got to decide on artist productions. Um, when I've got to decide on funding for these productions and uh, producing these productions. Imagine if at the same time I was producing my work. Imagine if at the same time I was writing, um, um, not writing rather, I was imposing my writing to be put on stage. I would be competing with the people I'm supposed to be assisting. It's painful, right? It's painful because I've got plays. When I watch plays, I'm like, ah, ah my play could have done better or, you know, 
all those issues. When I see an actor in a bad production, I'm like, oh, that actor needs a monologue of this type. And um, this is a production that he needs. And I know that um, I've written about seven plays that I've not produced. Uh, hopefully one day the council and the industry would say to me, I want the cow um, We give you a, a year to focus on your work. You sacrifice, sacrifice yourself uh, for the greater good of other people because you, you don't want to compete with them when you are given a, a responsibility to, to produce their works. But finally, um, about Madiba, is in one of the interviews that um, the, the History Channel has, um, I think it would be available on, even on the net. Uh, he's looking himself at the mirror, you know, fixing his shit. He's about to go to a meeting. He's been given notes by the late Jesse Duarte and Mayor Barbara Masekela. I think that's an Azuma, also people who are working with. And the, before he leaves, they're waiting for him outside. He's fixing his, his shirt. He says, people think I'm an angel. I'm not an angel. That was the most profound um, statement um, for a leader today. So as I am on this project, given this, this platform, speak amongst many other people, I hope it is realized I'm as much valuable. Um, I am, I'm, I've got mistakes and I, and I, I, I learn at all the times. Um, when I write an email <laughs> to Dr. Ismail Mohammed, who has many projects that he's running, and I write an email and say to him, Doc, my apologies, I need your response. Okay. And he says, I will do that now. That's the best award one can ever achieve. When you can call on people and they do you favors immediately, that supersedes any type of an honor. When I would send a message to Dr. Ghani and say to him, I want to talk to you, and he would say, Kamini, uh, um, you can call me at such time, I will call you. That is the best award I can ever receive. When I write to uh, Mike Van Gran, I write to Mo Molepo, I write to Silo Magakangobe, I write to Aubrey, I write to the CEO of State Theatre, of Artscape, of, of Market Theatre, of, of, of the Ben Bears, of Parkbox. When I write to them and they respond, that's the best award and one can ever um, imagine. When I write to the MEC, I write to the mayor, I write to the city manager, the executive director, and, and the, 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 the HOD and other officials, and they respond, I believe I have a freedom that is not abused. That is a reward I can never replace. Thank you. So I think the legacy was not just about uh, challenging colonialism and also racism and the apartheid era, but it was all about getting democracy and changing the lives of people, particularly people in our communities. And also in the students' movement, it's all about, it was all about getting students to get an education, which is adequate and allowing them an opportunity to shine out Umdeni wa Mandela wabe usuphoqa ukuthutha uye equnu okuyisigodi esincane esisempuma koloni Umgadla Mandela wayena ukuze themba wayephinde abe umeluleko phambili wenkosi inkosi ujonge intaba adale injebo owayephakamiswe ngumgadla ukuba abe inkosi ngo1928 Ogonye melana no keto kuga jongintabu guti. Loyo waye inzali fefane lo kosi usabata talinjebo. Waye mngane kakulu uti ngabusa. Ute ukushona kaba wake ngo 1930. Umandela wana kege ulangu jongintaba. Logo kutatwa kwa ke inju yob kosi baba tembo. Kwa atkazugutu umandela kmele asuge kunu. Aye e great palace. Emkege zweni.
In 1934, at 16 years old, Mandela went to initiation school to undergo Uluwaluko, a traditional ceremony whereby young boys transition into manhood. In the same year, Mandela enrolled at Clarkbury, a school run by C.C. Harris. It was here that Mandela was first introduced to a Western style of education. At the age of 19, Mandela was enrolled at Hilltown, the Wesleyan College of Fort Beaufort, which was a mission school of the Methodist Church. Hilltown was the largest school for Africans with more than a thousand students. The school curriculum focused on British history, but his history teacher, Weaver Nwana, added his own oral history about the wars between the British and the Amakosa. Mandela's nephew, Justice Ndalinjebo, four years his senior, was enrolled already at the school. O Mandela waba ilunga lokale mgeni nuwa ke ubuye mabangi nifunda pagemi. Waba no tando loksha ispagela ka yinu kichi mamabanga mate. Wapi nde waba no tando lwa masiga si Afrika ene nga ngumiste ni wana uwaye ngutisha waki. Waka ita umatigu leche ni e Hilltown Methodist Boarding School go 1938. Nga lo wabe eseba inga nye ye zanzana labantwana aba mnyama bakita mabangi mfunda pizulu eni ngizim Afrika. The patronage of Mandela's relative, Paramount Chief Dalinjebo, resulted in Mandela joining the region's Sun Justice at the University of Fort Hare, near Alice in the Western Cape, the only university for blacks in South Africa at the time. At Fort Hare, Mandela befriended African, Indian, and colored students, many of whom went on to play leading roles in the South African liberation struggle and in the anti-colonial struggle in some African countries. One of Mandela's fellow students was Oliver Tambo. They would later become partners in their law firm, close comrades and lifelong friends. Another notable friend was Keza Daliwonge Matazima, a man who would become a political opponent. In 1944, Mandela joined the African National Congress and soon became part of a group of young intellectuals that included Walter Sisulu, Oliver Tambo, Anton Lembete and Ashlim Da. The group articulated its dissatisfaction with the way the ANC was being run, critiqued its policy of appeasement and became the driving force in the formation of the ANC Youth League in April of the same year. Influenced by the Natal and Transvaal Indian Congresses, Passive Resistance Campaign of 1946 and the 1946 Mine Workers Strike, the ANC Youth League, led by Mandela, Sisulu and Oliver Tambo, began drafting what came to be known as the Programme of Action for the ANC. This called for the ANC to become a more militant organisation and would only be adopted by the ANC Youth League's parent organisation in 1949. One can view the tangential influence of Mandela's friendship with I.C. Mia and J.N. Singh here, as they were involved in the Indian Passive Resistance Campaign which proved so influential in guiding the ANC's future resistance movements. Well, I had the fortunate opportunity to meet him and shake his hand. So that's really struck with me. Um, he's tall, he's warm, and he's empathetic. Um, but I think moreover as a leader, as our first democratically elected president, he left us with a vision and something to strive for. And that's, and most importantly, the ability to forgive but never to forget. <laughs> that's a tough question. Um, no, I don't think so. But we also need to be realistic that we need to struggle first. You know, we need to learn to walk and fall before we run. But keeping the vision is most important. It's probably not what he would have wished for. But we, we need to be focused and we can't just rely on one person to do it for us. O Nelson Mandela wabo shwa mshazi islanu gu ngwa bangu 1962 e hamba ngogu nge mteto e suge goli. La hapo ayesangene kona no mkholi we ANC wangalisi askati u Albert Luturi. O Mandela wa yeze nzu mshaye lingi ngate banjwa nga mapoisa. Logu banjwa kwa ke kwa hole lekteni abo shwa imnyare nga mashuma mabili nisikombisa. 
kusugela zinta atu guya kwezi shishaka lombili kuntaba guo lonyaga i Adfluence Human Rights Festival ya ibanjelo e Mandela Kepta Site e Hawiki. I Adfluence Human Rights Festival ikonde ukishanganisa ukujelua ni bama kigo eze politigi kanyi na malungo mparati ase ningizim Afrika. Lomkupo oshanganisa ama triga gileli na wagwa manye amazwe ase mshabe ni chigilili. Waka indawo yokubungaza, ukumbula, ukshongoza, kanyeno kukuze lindima eja lo trigo kweza masigo na malungi laba. Mshazi mbili ngola anja ngo 1990, umuholi wezu wangalesia skati UFW Tiklek, enkulumenia ke palamende. Wame meze lukvulelega kwe ANC kanye nama nyama krembeze politiki. Wapinde wame meze la ukulula kamandela kanye nabanya babelwe linkululego. Kwa tige nge so ndo mshazi yishu mkulanja, mvago mnyage nga mashuma mabili neskombisa. Umandela watetelwa e Victor Vesta Prison. Nga lulu usugu wakulu mapamgwezi mkumbi za bandu maparati nekapa. Lo kukwa beku ukuvela kwa keko kukale mfagwe mnyake nga mashuma matatu. Nkulume niyake wavula nguguti. Ngian bingelela nonke eka menlo kolo, intando ye ningi, ninkulego ya bantu bonke. Lembunga azyo kwa mugela kuga matiba ya bakona eso weto na seti wini. About Nelson Mandela, I remember um, his grace um, as a person and as a leader, um, his wisdom, um, but most importantly, his love for children. Um, I think we need uh, Mandela's now more than ever, looking at how um, South Africa um, is treating um, its, its children. So that's mostly what I remember about Mandela. Umshawe shumi nisi shaka lombili kuntuli gazi. Ogu usugu lo kuzalwa kama tiba. Selwa kutuwa njenge mandela tei umshaba wonke. Aba antu emshabe ni chigilili ba kala i 67 minutes njenge mzamu ya abo yogu wenzu mishluge zimpilu nzaba nyaba antu. Lo kuba wenza njengu kombisa ukshoni pu mandela kule mnyaka engu 67 aga ikita elwe lugulungi iswa. Izi nchanga anu kanyi nama nyama lungu mparati aya anige lingi zinuate mitu wape nyo luazi kanyi na sezu kolene. Aba anye benzi msebe nzi yukusizi makaye zintandane na wabanta batala. Aba anye bakutululi zinta wabasala guzo kanyi nogu unyuk ningi. In Nelson Mandela Foundation ya sungu luango 1999 gengatu msungu luayo umnu mzane Nelson Mandela ebega panza zintambo zukukola izu la seningizim Afrika. Umandela waye ngumholu wakala wintandu ye ningi e ningizim Afrika. On 9 May 1994, soon after our landmark election results were in, he was unanimously elected president by South Africa's new members of parliament. The next day, Nelson Khulishata Mandela was sworn in at an inauguration ceremony at the union buildings in Pretoria. He vowed to serve only one term as president, and in 1999, he stepped down to make way for Thabo Mbeki. Soon after Mr. Mbeki was inaugurated as president on 16 June 1999, Mr. Mandela was on the telephone to rally his staff for the new task ahead. They had to remind him they no longer worked for him. And so, the Nelson Mandela Foundation was born. As Mr. Mandela's post-presidential office, it provided the base for his charitable work covering a wide range of endeavors, from building schools to HIV and AIDS work, from research into education in rural areas to peace and reconciliation interventions. Five years later, the foundation began its transition into an organization focused on memory, dialogue and legacy work. A comprehensive refurbishment of the foundation's building provided it with an appropriate physical home the Nelson Mandela Center of Memory. The center was opened on 18 November 2013 by former President Jacob Zuma, three years to the day after Mr. Mandela last used the building as his office. The House of Mandela is the organization through which the proud descendants of the late Nelson Mandela preserve the history and legacy of the family name and continue his work towards unity and compassion across global races regions and genders. I House of Mandela ipegele lukututugisa izmpilo za banda basa selo ububa emparatini abo. 
iphinde imele izingxaki zomphakathi ezithikame zemiphakathi yaseAfrika jikelele. Ikwenza lokho ngokuxhasa izinhlangano ezisizwe umphakathi. E House of Mandela kutholakala imkhakhe fana nokwakhiwa kobucwebe iwayini nokuciko. Kulapho kokutholakala khona imisebenzi yokuciko ka Mandela. Akazange ayakhe kuphela le misebenzi kepha waphinde waqhuguzela indlela yakhiwe ngayo le misebenzi. Ukusebenza kwakhe kuqhuguzela imisebenzi yamaciko efana no Brenda Fassi. Ingoma my black president yakhishwa ezinsukwini ezine ngaphambi kokukhululwa kwakhe ejele. In his lifetime, he contributed immensely to literature, with The Long Walk of Freedom being his most celebrated book to date. On 17 June 2010, Cape Town Opera produced the world premiere of African Songbook, a tribute to the life of Nelson Mandela at Artscape Opera House Cape Town. The work was conceived in celebration of Nelson Mandela in the run up to his 92nd birthday. and to serve as a cultural showpiece concurrent with the 2010 World Cup soccer tournament in South Africa. After its premiere, the show's title was changed to Mandela Trilogy. Mandela Trilogy is a truly homebrew production that highlights the unique and forceful sound of the African voice. Ikondi songo Ismail Mohamed is Center for Creative Arts at the University of Zulu Natal. Isi kombise ukuba ngungaphambili ekuthuthukiseni nasekwesekeni intando namalungelo abantu kwezobuciko. The South African State Theatre plays a vital part in producing platforms that support human rights and democracy in the arts alongside its cultural programming. Legislated as a cultural institution in terms of the South African Cultural Institutions Act number no. 119 of 1998 the theater ceo dr sibong senim kize along with artistic director obi sikhabi established youth programming as fundamental to the celebration and development of the south african performance industry well the institution uh, the south african state theater actually has evolved over time and uh, the theater that we see today actually is a child of the new south africa it emerged uh, out of the challenges of the 1990s which actually means that uh, it had to embrace uh, the values of uh, nelson mandela uh, as a theater Uh, in fact uh, one of its uh, its names when it was reopened in 2002 it had to be called the, Re- the renaissance theater because it was uh, a newly born entity uh, of the new south africa uh, as an institution that actually embraces uh, what madiba stood for but in terms of the governance of the entity i think it goes without saying that when one looks at for example how we 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 do things as a as a theater we try by all means to make sure that uh, we subscribe to the principles of good corporate governance and good co- corporate governance means that there must be honesty there must in- be integrity our own values as an entity our own mission and vision and values actually are in line with the values of madiba so when you look at the institution in terms of its responsiveness and in terms of how in it interacts with the public it interacts with the the arts and, uh, and, and theater community is actually inspired by madiba's values well i think the legacy of madiba permeates actually through all the, the the shows that we put on stage including our our festivals remember madiba's uh, values it's uh, they're about peace forgiveness compassion and human dignity and that runs through everything we do Uh, for example we've just had a show called Marikana Marikana is also about human dignity it's about compassion that was lacking it doesn't have to be us uh, showing compassion on stage but also we need to stage shows that challenge the new south african dispensation as to are we actually still living according to the values of madiba and the constitution uh, of 1996 so through the plays that we put on stage be it askari Uh, be it for example uh, bloc and the american bantu it's also uh, uh, about uh, the importance 
of the diaspora and the international uh, involvement in the story of South Africa's liberation. It's also about inclusivity. So all our shows, uh, especially those that uh, are staged during our festivals, and you, you, you actually see young people trying to reinterpret and engage the new South Africa, and actually also challenging some of the things that we haven't done as a country to deal with problems of inequality, problems of exclusivity, and uh, issues of poverty and unemployment. And when you look at Madiba's values, uh, what Madiba had in mind was a society that is much better uh, than what we are going through at the moment. So I think his, vo his values live through what we do, and we need to engage with them. And so we need to ask ourselves tough questions on a daily basis. Well, the South African State Theatre as an institution, uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, it was born out of a difficult uh, country and also a country that was emerging out of apartheid. So through all the plays that we put on stage, we try by all means to make sure that we engage with the new South African dispensation. And uh, for example, we have just had uh, uh, Marikana, which uh, closed this past Sunday. Uh, what Marikana actually engages with is the values that are, uh, are those values that relate to human dignity and uh, compassion, not necessarily uh, having to present those on stage, but also to present the lack of compassion and human dignity. And for example, what Ma Ma Madiba uh, wanted us to see was uh, an inclusive, compassionate, and a caring state. And our shows actually are grappling with those questions to say, are we actually doing that? Whether one looks at uh, shows like Ascari, uh, look at the uh, Bloke and the American Bantu, all of them really are dealing with uh, some aspects or, or, or different aspects of Madiba's values, uh, especially the issues uh, that relate to compassion, issues that relate to peace and forgiveness. And we actually try by all means to focus on most of the values during our festivals, and uh, especially the shows that are done by young people. You see every day how young people interpret Madiba's values, but also challenge us to say, have we done enough to create a caring, capable, and a compassionate state, also a state that values human dignity? Thank you. Kusugela zi is tu paguya zinga mashuma mabili na ntlanu guntu uliga zingu 2010. Iste tiye taka yine pambili productions betula umzalo irivonia trial. Njenge ngayenye ye freedom series. Leli kala eli no mlando lali pegwe nga mesa bovu msaba wonke. Nje ngoba leli lali yikara elali tumiga kulu eningizim Afrika. Lo mzalo wapa lango kisanga nyela uopri si khabi, umanda tube, kanyi no mpumele lo po khutpum. I think one way of keeping uh, the Mandela legacy alive uh, through theatre is to keep on telling his story uh, so we can remember, so we don't forget. Uh, as a state theatre, I think we've done works like Ruvonia Trial, uh, which I consider one of the uh, biggest South African drama post-apartheid. And in that, because you find all these people, all these nations, all this uh, uh, in, in, in one production, it was massive in that sense, because you could see how, how what, what, what it meant for everyone. Because then suddenly you have Katrada, you have uh, uh, Sisulu, you know, so you have all these people there. And with Trivonia Trial, we could actually display that because it brought the best of South African talent on one stage. But telling that story in itself is keeping his, his, his legacy alive. I think that the art landscape is doing its best to adapt since Mandela's release. Because, I mean, I, I, I grew up in Pretoria. I, I never had access to the state theatre. I actually remember one time we came to showcase and they even forgot about us. But today you come to the state theatre, you find a lot of young people. It's open for all, so there is access. So, and that is a big step, uh, I think, I think, I think towards, towards development, because uh, people can practice their art. You know, if you are a singer, you are a dancer, you are a fine artist, you know that the state theatre is the home for South African uh, theatre. Democracy is important in the arts. If you look back and you look at works like uh, um, uh, Survival, works like Bopa, Egoli, you know, those works were banned. Uh, 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 a lot of the artists were arrested. 
and, 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 and because there was no freedom of expression, but democracy gives you that. It gives you freedom of expression, uh, and, and our constitution provides for that. So, so I think democracy is important for the arts because artists can express themselves without fear or favor. Ngo 2018, is State Theatre, Sama Ike Mbe Selwini Zindondez Ningi Zama Grammy Awards. I Lady Smith Black Mambazo, Uguzo Lonipa Umandela. Kwa ati ngonyago landelayo, babe sebe kula eko chunga munga mili. Ogwa kholele ktenini umandela bame mezele njenga pa kukuze libeza matriku, abasa zingen lo mshaba. Wangishiela hanu no matemo ha During my lifetime, I have dedicated myself to the struggle of the African people. I have fought against white domination and I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the ideal of democratic and a free society in which all persons live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve. But if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. Remember to like, share, comment and subscribe. Till we meet next time, signing out. Thank you.